salutations hey what's up guys my name is logan and welcome back to the channel where today we are going to be reading diary of Wimpy kid the breaking point for part two we are going to finish up this story all in one video we have 90 pages to go through so this is definitely going to be a really long story and i cannot wait to see what else happens in this already crazy ass fan fiction honestly so far i think it's the most random one we've read so just to do a quick recap of the last episode rowley is a, a drug addict and uh his parents are missing we don't know if they're dead or not but yeah, uh, Rowley's a drug addict, and he tries to get Greg to do the drugs, but Greg doesn't want to do it. Greg punches Rowley because he doesn't want to do the drugs anymore, and then he ends up killing Rowley because he lost a bet and throws him at a parade float and ends up killing him. But it turns out Manny and Fregley are actually part of a cult and bring this guy back to life, because why not? And then Greg invites Rowley to Bryce Anderson's party so he can drug him and basically just beat him up but it didn't end up working out and it ended <laughs> it actually ended up with greg getting absolutely violated in the closet by rowley bryce anderson's house burned down and yeah i mean that's pretty much where we left off where greg is actually considering becoming the new uh cartoon creator guy at his school for the school paper so let's take a look at what he's got and finish diary of wimpy kid the breaking point Tuesday. Okay, so far, I have these few comics as an idea. If you step on a crack and make a wish, it'll come true. Okay, let's see. Your whole family was just brutally killed in an explosion. It worked! Uzi Chawa. Dang, this guy's such a dickhead. Why would he wish for that? Rally always had this dumb punchline, Zooey Mama. He basically stole it from me. But Uzi Chawa was always better. The next comic I had was this beauty. Hurry! This is an emergency. Ma'am, I think my burger has been poisoned. It has been poisoned. That was fast. I didn't put the Uzi Chawa in there, but I still kept the dark humor, which is good. But I finally made the best comic ever. I call it Booger Eater. I already know this is gonna be really stupid, so <laughs> let's hop straight in. Finally, my booger collection is complete. Hey, are you gonna eat those? No way, I've been saving these for five years. Hey doctor, my nose won't stop bleeding. Booger eater. It's because you keep picking your nose. But, but, it's my favorite sport. Of course, the main character, Booger Eater, is inspired by the one and only Rowley Jefferson. Speaking of, he actually made a comic for the opening. Hey Greg, you pooped your pants. Uh oh, yeah huh. From this, I could obviously tell that Rowley was trying to make me mad, but it didn't work. Believe it or not, Fregley made a comic too. Look, Greg is a frog. Wednesday, something strange happened today. There's a knock on the door, so I opened it, and it was Fregley. He slobbered all over his face and pushed past me before I could shove him out. He ran through the hallway on all fours to Manny's room. Who knows what they could be plotting in there. Fregley looks like he's off some shrooms. What is up with his eyes right here? Look at his pupil. Like, this one's tiny, and this one's probably bigger than Manny's head. What the hell did this guy take? I ran over there, and I banged on Manny's bedroom door. Fregley poked his head out and said, Stay out of our way, Greg Heffley. So much for confronting him. I just left it at that though, because I didn't want my arm snapped by Manny. But I'm kind of looking forward tomorrow though, because that's when my comic wins. Thursday. Today was the day the results came in. Can you guess who won? And the new cartoonist for the school paper is... Greg Heffley. I was hoping everyone or at least one person to recognize me. But they kept calling me Earwax. I decided to look for clues, so I looked at the school paper and I saw the monstrosity that was my comics. Hi, my name is Greg Heffley, but you can call me Earwax. I like to shove my earwax up my butt. I call it a muddy pig in a blanket. It was humiliating. It must have been Manny and Fregley. So after school, I confronted him, and he said this was only the beginning. I guess it was too. Even the teachers were getting into it. Who wants a muddy pig in a blanket? By the way, that earwax nickname is probably going to stick with me for the rest of my life. And I can already see it. We are kicking you out because your name is Earwax. <laughs> what? Friday. After thinking about it, I'm taking this to the principal. I know kids are bullying me, but when the teachers are too, that's crossing the line. So I went to Principal Roy about this situation. But it wasn't what I was expecting. Hey, it's the earwax kid. Even the principal was making fun of me. I went to my parents about it, and well, 
You probably know what's gonna happen next. Whatever you say, Earwax. I give up. Monday. I thought the whole Earwax thing was going to die down by the end of the weekend, but it didn't. But I did see a similar face at lunch today. It was Shirag. I thought we both could bond over us being outcasts, so I sat by him. What's up, Earwax? Right back at ya, Invisible Shirag. I guess it worked too, because we became friends at the end of the day. Tuesday. We had a snow day because it was snowing and it was too cold outside. Shirag called me and asked if we could hang out. I definitely wasn't going to go to this house in this weather. I was probably going to get hypothermia just by stepping out of the door. So I told him yes, but he had to come to my house. At first, we were just playing simple things like board games until mom came in with a surprise. Look who came to join you. It was Manny. He probably thought we were plotting against him or something. I didn't want him bothering us and it looked like Shirag didn't either. So when mom left, he just ignored him. But for some reason, he kept sniffing Shirag like he was a slab of meat in his pocket. So Shirag did something that made me proud. Shrog kicked Manny like a football to the moon. Right after that, Shrog grabbed him by the arms and chucked him into the furnace room <laughs> and locked him in. Manny was really quiet about it too, which was weird. So I filled Shrog into the whole rally situation because if he pulls a stunt like that again, he could be killed. After a while, I decided to let Shrog stay over for the night because we probably weren't going to have school tomorrow. A few hours later, in the middle of the night, we kept hearing strange noises from inside the furnace room. Me and Chirag shot up and looked at each other and immediately knew putting Manny in there was a bad idea. It was indeed, because the lights went out. I thought Roderick would help me out with getting Manny under control, so me and Chirag went to Roderick's room, but he was asleep. I didn't want him to get hurt again anyway, so I let him be. I guess it's just me and Chirag. So me and Chirag looked in the furnace room and he wasn't there. We turned the whole house upside down looking for him, but he wasn't anywhere. I even looked at the power box and it wasn't even touched. After a while, me and Chirag just called it quits. It was super late at night anyway and we were very tired, so we went to sleep. Later that night, I woke up and this happened. Right when Chirag managed to get out of Manny's little trap, I grabbed Manny, shoved him in a box and closed it. <laughs> Manny moved around a lot in it, but when he finally calmed down, that gave me and Chirag some time to breathe. During that time to breathe, I got an idea. I taped the box shut and I snuck out of the house. Once I got in the backyard, I buried Manny alive. <laughs> After that, me and Chirag had a good night's sleep. Okay, so you're telling me that Manny just lets himself get buried alive in a box by Greg, but this guy's neck was built like a flamingo in the last episode and snapped Roderick's arm like a toothpick? This is not adding up. This is part of Manny's plan. He's got something up his sleeve that nobody's gonna be expecting. So just wait. Wednesday. Thankfully, the snow melted this morning, but me and Shirag still had school. When I got home today, mom looked stressed and dad was there too. I asked dad what was going on and he said that mom was looking for Manny all day and couldn't find him. Oh no, wait, I guess I was fine because how would they know it was me? I don't know why mom likes Manny anyways. Do you know how many knives she's found while she changes Manny's diapers? <laughs> how did this get in here again? Anyway, Mom thinks that he's dead and we are going to do a funeral tomorrow, Thursday. While we were going to the funeral, Roderick asked me if Manny was actually dead and I told him what happened last night. Then we went to the funeral and whatnot. It was kind of amusing to be honest, just knowing that we're having a funeral for my little brother even though he was actually rotting in a box in our backyard is funny. I guess seeing mom distraught is a little sad, but deep down, I don't really care. I'm just praying that Manny doesn't somehow get out of that small casket. Hopefully. Wednesday. February. The time of love. Or so I thought. Let me explain. So I started to fall in love with this girl in my class named Becky Anton. Since it was almost Valentine's Day, I decided I was going to give her a Valentine's card. I WAS going to give her an amazing store-bought card. But the people who make these things always put something cheesy on it like this. Will you be the noose to my neck? I obviously wasn't going to use something so original, so I made a poem. Roses are red, violets are blue. If you don't love me back, I'll kill you. What? Oh my lord. <laughs> okay. Thursday. Guys at my school will do anything to get a girl. This one kid named Brian Colon got this one girl that he liked to date her by cutting off his actual ear. How come I didn't think of that? A lot of other guys are using this idea too, and it's working. 
I think it's becoming a trend. All these kids are getting hearing problems now and their parents are starting to complain to the school about these relationships. Next thing you know, they aren't using condoms. After the news broke out about kids not being allowed to be in relationships anymore, the whole school went haywire. I saw some of the girls in the hallway and they were protesting about not having boyfriends. Friday, day two of the new rule in school. It's actually getting a little depressing if you ask me. This one girl in my class named Jamie just broke up with her boyfriend forcibly. She hasn't got any work done in class and I think she's just given up on hope. Obviously, some kids have been trying to hide their relationships. These two kids in school take their relationships very seriously. Their names are Karen Riley and Wally Marsh. So basically, these two 8th graders came up to me and told me there was some weird stuff going on in the janitor's closet every day at 11 o'clock. So obviously, I got a little curious and decided to check it out myself. Now I'm just going to say that I was not pleased. Slurp? This guy's getting a rug and tug at 11 o'clock at school every single day. I'm not going to go into very much detail. <laughs> Monday. Apparently, the teachers finally found out about what Karen and Wally were doing and they put a stop to it. The teachers didn't just stop there. They thought other kids were doing what Karen and Wally were doing, but in other private places like the bathrooms. Now the teachers are always on everyone's tails every second of the day to know what they're doing. If it doesn't end soon, I'm going to go insane. Wednesday. The peak of this madness happened today. At the end of the day, a teacher was walking to her car until a group of boys appeared on the top of the school building. What did they do to her? They threw used tampons at her. What? Where did they get that? Where did they get these? For a second, I thought it was going to be like firecrackers or something like semi-normal, something like that. But where's the- Why? Why? Thursday. It rained very hard last night and I couldn't sleep. It wasn't until 2.30 a.m. when I heard these little footsteps. They couldn't be mom or dad's footsteps or even Roderick's. Hey, what what did we say before? Man, there's no way Manny's just gonna let himself get buried alive like that. But I wanna know why this guy was just buried alive for that long. Cause we went from like him getting a funeral to February. So I'm thinking like it's been a month. Why was Manny just letting himself get buried alive for a month? You know what? We're gonna find out right now, so let's see. It shook me a little bit, but after building up the courage, I decided to take a look for myself. So I threw some clothes on and wandered around the house. Strangely enough, I did find something. There was muddy footprints all over the house. Some of them were even on the ceiling. I don't want to know how that happened. I knew this couldn't be a raccoon because raccoons don't climb on ceilings, at least I don't think so. So I kept on looking. After a little bit of investigating, I found the end of the muddy footprint trail. It led outside the front door. But that didn't really help the situation that much. I was trying to find where it came from, not where they went. So again, I continued the search. It was kind of hard finding where they came from. They were everywhere. But when I found the source, they came from my own backyard. I think I had a mini heart attack to putting all the pieces together. I started back to my room. It's really startling knowing that Manny was back on the loose. I was getting freaked out by the little things I would hear behind my back. I was getting too paranoid so I just made a run for it. Once I finally made it back to my room, I saw the abomination before my very eyes. It was Manny. But he had wings. I rubbed my eyes, wondering what I just saw. But when I looked again, he was gone. I locked my window and shut the curtains. If what I saw was real, I do not want that thing getting to me. I was going back to sleep, but I kept my bedroom lights on. For now on, I'm going to sleep with my eyes open. Valentine's Day. It's finally the day I've been waiting for. Today I'm gonna give Becky and Tom my Valentine's Day card I made. But now, I've got a small parasite after me. But I have nothing to worry about. I'm going to bring my gun to school today. It's not actually my gun though. I found it in dad's box under his bed. It's labeled the end, whatever that means. I immediately went up to Becky when I got to school. I gave her the one I made that had the poem on it. But when I gave it to her, she said, what are you, a pedophile? <laughs> what did she mean by that? I'm not a pedophile. I guess so much for that. So I just continued my day, but it's Valentine's day. I should be with someone. I was sadly walking to my next class, but that was when I ran into Manny. Salutations, bubby. After I quickly got a hold of myself, I realized this was my chance. So I shot a bullet at him. But that's when I realized something. He dodged my bullet. 
That means I can kill him. But when Manny spoke up again, he, and he told me he was the reincarnated as Cupid, I asked him what that had to do with anything, and he shot someone behind me. I turned around, and it was Ruby Bird. She was giving me googly eyes. I already knew where this was going, and I didn't like it. Hey, I mean, he didn't want to be alone on Valentine's Day, and Manny over here, which apparently is the reincarnated Cupid, just solved your problem. So if anything, you should be thanking him. The next thing you know, she's charging on me and the only reasonable thing that I did was shoot her. What? It was the only thing I could do. It was self-defense. Anyway, now that I had Manny to deal with, I immediately shot at him and missed, but not completely. I actually shot his wing and he fell to the ground. Manny's bow and arrows fell with him and I quickly picked them up before he did and snapped them in half. And then he looked at me just like he looked at Roderick when he broke <laughs> Roderick's arm. So I made a run for it and never saw him for the rest of the day. After the whole crazy Valentine's Day, I was really looking forward to going home. But when I did, I got something a little off in the mail. Hey Greggy, long time no talk, but don't worry. I've got something real special for you, Rowley. P.S. I got a toenail just for you. March, Saturday. Today, me and my family went to the old-timey ice cream parlor, and we brought Grandpa along. We all sat down, and when the waitress came over, she counted us, and she landed on me last. She called the whole staff over to our table, and I was starting to get nervous. If they call the cops or something, I'm blaming everything on Roderick. But it wasn't what I was expecting at all. I thought it was a little cool and all, but what really sparked my interest was when the guy who looked like the owner gave me a big old check of $100,000. My whole family was flabbergasted as well. When I got home, we started brainstorming about what I was going to use the money for. My mom asked if I could give half of it to the poor, but I told her to tell that to Elon Musk. <laughs> my dad said I should use it to buy myself a... Uh, what? Okay, hold on. Rifle. <laughs> okay. But nothing could compare their suggestions to Grandpa's. Buy some hookers with it, Gregster. Don't call me that. <laughs> but the truth is, I'm secretly using the money to give it to Roderick. It'll be a little something to pay him back from when he broke his arm a few months ago. But then I got an idea on how I can lie about using the money and still getting something out of it. So I asked mom and dad if me and Roderick can have a house party tonight. Mom and dad said no, so I told them that if anything gets broken, I can pay for it. Then they agreed to it. But I did give them some money for tickets so they can go on a vacation so they wouldn't be here. Those greedy little pigs. Once grandpa left too, the party was on. Roderick called his friends and his friends called their friends. I also heard Roderick say in his calls, my brother's party, which kind of made me feel good. After a while, we had everyone down my block at the party. Once people heard there was a gigantic party at my place, we had even more people. That's when the party truly started. Okay, we got some more pictures. What is this? Is that a sock? Oh, is that a cum sock? Uh-oh, it's dripping. How much did they produce? God damn. This guy really dabbing. What is this? Is that a gun? Yeah, and this guy. He, he's dabbing. Wait, and what, what fucking year is it? 2022 and this guy's dabbing? No, he needs to die. Sunday. What happened last night? The house is a wreck. I promised myself I wouldn't let the place become a mess so I wouldn't have to pay for anything that got damaged. But I guess that idea was thrown out the window. Did I mention that my leg hurt? Anyway, I woke up Roderick and I asked him about what happened last night. I was really surprised. He said that I got drunk and I fell off the roof. I've never drank before, and knowing that is what happens, I'm never doing it that again. Why was I on top of the roof in the first place? Anyway, there was still the whole house to clean up, and there were people to kick out. So me and Roderick got to work pretty quick. One thing that seemed really strange and wouldn't leave my mind was that Roderick's band left really early in the morning, apparently. They would usually stay for the night for a few days, but I just tried to ignore it. After tidying up the place, me and Roderick just sat down to watch TV. I started flipping through the channels really fast because I was trying to see if Twisted Wizard, the animated series, was on. But somehow, Roderick saw something on one of the channels that shocked him so much that he practically lunged out of his seat, and his eyes bulged out of his head. He started screaming at me to go back, and I did. Believe me, I was as shocked as he was. 
Rock Band becomes famous sensation overnight. Roderick just sat and stared at the TV, flabbergasted. I could not even imagine what was going on inside his head. But with quick thinking, I remembered the money. Don't worry, Roderick. I I've got a really cool surprise for you. I'll go get it. I got up and I swiftly ran to my room as fast as I could. If this somehow doesn't cheer him up, what else would? And so I began digging through my really clean and organized closet because that's just where I left it. Incredibly, I couldn't find it anywhere. And that's when it clicked. The check was gone. Because Roderick's band found it, stole it, and used it to become really famous rock stars. So now I knew mom and dad were going to kill me and Roderick's going to be depressed forever. I sadly walked back to Roderick devastated and I told him about everything and what happened. And then that's when I saw Roderick do something and I've never seen him do before, ever in my entire life. He started to cry. He started talking about how his life was unfair to him and stuff. I didn't know what to do but comfort him. It was the least I could do for him. I actually hope he gets better. April, Wednesday. I got arrested today. Let me explain. A few days after the whole party incident, dad woke me up and said that the police were here to arrest me. I still don't know why they arrested me. Let me just say, being in jail is not fun. I didn't even know what drop the soap even meant until it happened. <laughs> Thursday. I just had to spend the night in that horrible place. It was cold. Not to mention that it smelled like a Discord mod's bathroom. <laughs> but lucky, Roderick came in to bust me out of this place this morning. It was such a relief. I thought I was going to be there my whole life. Before I left, though, the police officer said that I had to come back tomorrow for my trial. I'm not really looking forward to that. Friday. I got out of my trial today and I figured I was framed. And But no one believes me. Apparently... I burnt down an orphanage with all the kids. I asked them how they absolutely knew it was me. And they said a kid who was fat and a kid with glasses ratted me out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who those two are. But that's not the important part. The important part is that I have to pay a $1,000 fine. That check would have been pretty useful right now. So anyway, I had to find out how I was going to get that money. And that's when it hit me. That Stringer family has that one kid named Weasley I can babysit. Anyway, I called Miss Stringer if I can babysit Weasley $100 a day for two weeks. And surprisingly, she said yes. How? Oh, okay, whatever. So I went to the Stringer's house ready to babysit the little ones. But before everyone left, Miss Stringer told me that there was one more person coming over to babysit Weasley too honestly didn't care unless I was going to get my money's worth. Oh fuck, I think I know who it's gonna be. After they left, I went to find Weasley. When I did though, he immediately asked me a question. Wanna play hide and seek? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Once he went to hide, I got some time to myself. So I just sat back onto the couch and turned on some TV. After I was about five minutes into the show I was watching, there was a knock on the door. I thought I might have been the other babysitter, so I answered the door. But when I did, I immediately regretted it. It was Rowley. That's when I remembered his letter he sent me two months ago. You planned this whole thing. I couldn't turn back now. I looked him straight into his bulging eyes and told him not to do anything stupid. So I sat down on the couch and continued to watch TV. But Rowley plopped his fat butt a little too close to me and said, isn't it like we're raising our own child? Luckily, Weasley came into the room just in time, and I guess I kind of, <laughs> I guess I kind of forgot about him. He surprisingly didn't look mad though. When he came in, he asked me and Riley if we wanted to have a Nerf war. I didn't have anything else to lose, so I said sure. Then he pulled out an actual gun and started to shoot at us. After I made Riley tackle Weasley and wrestle the gun out of his hand, I locked Weasley in the lodging room as punishment. Then I just went back to watch more TV. Once I got up to raid the Stringler's kitchen for snacks, Riley followed me and asked if I could be his queen again. I absolutely said no, but when I did, he shoved me to the laundry room just like I did with Weasley. Not only that, I also heard him breaking stuff. That's when I realized that Riley was breaking stuff because he was going to frame me. Again. I knew that I couldn't just sit there and do nothing, so I tried to find a way out. There was no windows in the room, and the only door to get out was the one that Riley pushed me through. But, I found a door to a vent. 
But then I remembered something. I almost forgot about Weasley. Fortunately, I had a plan on what to do with Weasley when I escape. So unfortunately, I had to take that little brat with me. It's hot in here. So yeah, Weasley isn't going to shut up soon. Can you shut up, Weasley? What are we doing here? Shut up, Weasley. Where are we going? Weasley, listen here, Weasley. I've had it with you. I will sit here and pee my pants until you shut up. Really? Uzi Chawa, whose arm is it? Are you, don't tell me this is Rowley. It was Rowley. I wasn't going to take any chances of him latching onto my ankle, so I grabbed Weasley and made a run for it. A little while after I ran through that big labyrinth of vents, I made it outside. You may be wondering, how did you get the money to pay for the orphanage? Simple. All I had to do, all I, all I had to do was hold Weasley for a ransom. Long story short, I paid the debt. <laughs> May, Tuesday. Oh, I almost had a number two after waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning and seeing Manny right above me. After Manny slapped me in the face a couple times, I finally kept quiet. I almost yelled for Roderick until Manny said that he had a message from Rowley. Basically, Rowley said that he was tired of waiting for me to become his queen, so he's gonna kill me. On Friday, to be exact. He told me that I had to meet them on the basketball court at school. Believe me, I tried begging to Manny, but he just wouldn't budge. Please, Manny, I'll do anything. I'll even wipe your butt for you. Too late, Bubby. You had your chance. I guess I'm not getting through to him. Wednesday. I stayed up all night and I came up with a plan, but I wouldn't really call it a plan because it's so simple. All I have to do is fight back. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. How are you going to fight Rowley, Manny, and Fred all by yourself? Well, I'll tell you. I'm going to fight fire with fire. Today, I was thinking about who could join me battle the, the Three Stooges, but it occurred to me that Sherrod could help me. When it was lunch, I knew it was my chance, so I sat next to him and I immediately cut to the chase. I told him about everything and how Rowley was planning on killing me. Please help me, Sherrod. I need your- I really need your help. Alright guys, we're nearing the end. We have- 10 pages left. Wow, this has been a story. I could tell Shirag wasn't that fond of the idea. I wouldn't blame him though. After what happened back in January. But then I reminded him about how I saved him back in kindergarten when I pulled this cat's leg out of his ear. Ooh. Huh? <laughs> then he remembered how he still owes me that favor, so that's how he decided to join me. Thursday. Somehow, word got out about the big fight, and everyone was getting really excited about it. Outside school, I saw some kids getting riled up in wrestling. Once I got home from school, I quickly went to Roderick, as I did the Shirag. I told him about what Rowley said and how he's gonna kill me and that I needed his help. After talking it over with him, he finally agreed. Now all I have to do is prepare for tomorrow. I'm kind of scared, honestly. Not Rowley or Fregley, but Manny. Manny is the one who has these demonic powers. But just in case, I'm bringing a gun to school, just like I did the last time. Friday. It was the day of the fight. After school ended, we all met up on the basketball court, just like we promised. Roderick and Chirag were at my side. We were ready. The whole school was watching. But I didn't want to embarrass myself, so I made the first move. I charged at rally with murder in my eyes. This is what he was going to get for everything he had done this whole year. That's when I made the first hit. I started to hear the crowd of kids cheer me on. I actually think we might win. I looked over and I saw Shirag fighting Manny. Shirag was really scared because he bit Manny's ear off. But Roderick wasn't doing so hot. Frankly was wrecking <laughs> like King Roderick's face like a dog. Holy. When I actually started looking around, I noticed that everyone was fighting. It was a total war zone. Holy shit! <laughs> I, is this a is this a picture that like the guy who made this story like made himself? Cause that's actually impressive. I saw that Shirag was caught in a fight with some other random kid, so I decided to run over to help him. It was good that I knocked Rally out because that brought me some time. I looked at Manny and it looked like he was gonna rescue his comrade too. He somehow killed a row of kids getting to Fregley. That's when I noticed that Manny was coming for Roderick too. Is this guy fucking Mr. Fantastic? What, like, look how stretchy his arm is. I didn't want Manny to do what he did to Roderick before, so I had to put Shirag on hold. But when I saw Manny get to Roderick, Manny unleashed his ultimate form. What the hell is that? This guy looks like a grasshopper. 
That is one ugly ass thing. That is disgusting. That's when Manny did something I'd never forget. Right before my eyes, I saw Manny rip every limb off Roderick's body one by one. I quickly dashed over to Roderick, but when I did, I took out my gun and pumped Manny's body with lead. As I knelt down to Roderick, I knew this was going to be his finale. I started apologizing to him for everything I've done and getting him to into this. He started to cough up blood and in his final breath, my brother said to me, This past year has been the best. Thanks for everything, pal. I started getting a million thoughts through my head. One in particular was how this whole thing started. Everything that has led up to this day has been because of Rowley. Rowley did all of it, and it led to killing my own brother. That's when it broke me. I was done. I wanted to finish this. I walked through the crowd of kids, and I shot Rowley right through his head. Most of the kids started screaming. They were all scrambling around like ants. I didn't see Fregley anywhere. He basically vanished. But it doesn't matter. I already did what was needed to be done. I started to hear police sirens, so I grabbed Shirog and we both made a break for it. I told them what happened about Roderick and all, and he comforted me about it. This is the final time I'm writing in this. I'm gonna bury this in my backyard tonight. So long, I guess. Damn. That was crazy. I mean, we went from Rowley trying to get Greg to do drugs to Greg shooting Rowley because he caused Roderick's death. Wow. I mean, I'm lost for words because the story was just crazy. Like, it, it was actually pretty good. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. Did you guys like this story? And did you think that it needed to be this long, like 150 pages? Because I, I felt like it could have been like cut up shorter, you know? I felt like it could have maybe been like a little bit shorter. But I'm, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed reading it. It, it was really fun. It was, a, it was a crazy ride. But, you know, here we are at the end. And there's so many thoughts just going through my head right now. <laughs> like, some things that never really got explained were where are Rowley's parents? You know, like, they, they're gone. But where are they? Why did they disappear? We don't know. You know, it would have been nice to actually find that out. And why did uh, Greg's dad, why did he have a cult music thing just randomly in his room? That never got explained either. Um, it would have been cool to like have a twist where maybe he's part of the like the Rowley, Manny and Fregley cult. Something just something cool like that would have been nice to just to kind of fill in that plot hole with him being in a cult it really never got explained so i don't know that, that's pretty much my only complaints with the story though it was, it was really good i had a lot of again i had a lot of fun reading it definitely some crazy plot twists and a lot of crazy things going on i hope all you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more diary of wimpy kid fan fiction stories so i'll see you guys in the next one